All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the rank functions. Now, there's actually three different types of rank functions in Excel 2010. There is uh, just this rank function, which provides some backward compatibility uh, for earlier versions uh, prior to, I believe, Excel 2007. And there's also this rank.avg and also a rank.eq. This is an older rank function, the, the first one here. And uh, Microsoft suggests using these two functions and I'll show you how to use uh, actually all three of them. So let's first start off with the rank function. So the way that we use this, for example, is maybe we have a bunch of students and they have some test scores and we want to rank them and see which one's first, uh, either from ascending or descending. So by default, it takes it from uh, descending, the higher score, and it ranks down that that's going to be the, the highest. So for example, uh, a score of 100, it's going to be coming in first place. Uh, 99 will come in second place, etc. You can also rank uh, ascending, so it'd be basically the opposite. So let's start off with the rank function. Basically, you type equal R-A-N-K. I'm going to go ahead and tab to give me that. Oops. Let me go ahead and just select this rank here. And you can see like when you hover over and you select it, it gives you the little screen tip here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just pick rank, and it's going to open up that parentheses. The number that I want is this number. And the reference is the array, or the list of uh, numbers that I want to compare against. So I'm going to go ahead and put a comma. I'm going to go ahead and select D2 here. You can see now the marquee has selected D2 here. I'm going to press a keyboard shortcut to go ahead and select the range from D2 to the bottom of where the, the list is. And that's going to be Control shift down arrow so you can see that it's selected it. And what I want to do is when this is selected, I'm going to press the F4 key so it's going to make it an absolute cell reference range. So if I do that, you'll see that there's a dollar sign in front of the letters and the numbers in this range. And what it does is when I copy it down to other cells, uh, that won't change. This D2 is going to change to D3, D4, D5 as this formula gets copied down. But this D2 to D21, since it's in dollar signs, since it has dollar signs in front of it, that will not change. So we have our third argument here. I'm going to go ahead and type comma, you have our third argument here, which is descending and ascending. Now descending is default. So basically, as I mentioned before, the higher number, like maybe 100, is going to be first. And it goes from 100, that will be first, and 99 would be second, etc. Now ascending would be the opposite. If you don't select anything, it's going to default to zero, ascending. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, backspace to delete that comma and just close parentheses and press enter. So now we see that 71, the score 71 is ranked fifth. I'm going to go ahead and select this cell and double click the fill handle. That's that little small square down here. I'm going to go ahead and double click that and it's going to copy the formula all the way down. So now you see that uh, the second one there, 50 is eight. And the reason why this is highlighted here is that these are duplicate values. So there's 50, there's another 50 in the list which is down here. From, so D3 is a 50 and also D12 is a 50. And you'll notice that the rank is the same, eight and eight. And that's what the, the rank function does. If it sees duplicates, it's going to go ahead and give it the same rank number. And then 9 will be missing. There's, there's not going to be any 9 here. So if I scroll down, you'll notice that there is no 9 there. So basically the 8, 8, it becomes uh, the same rank. And the next number is gone. It just isn't there. Well, the next function kind of alleviates that. And the way that it does it is it averages out those two numbers and gives it a, a halfway number. So I'll show you what that means. So I'll use the rank function. I type, I type equal rank and just select A, A V G. Double click that. And the number I'm going to use is 71, comma, and then the reference is I'm going to click in this cell, control shift down arrow, press the F4 key to lock those as absolute cell references. I don't need the order, so I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. And even when I press enter without closing the parentheses, Excel is smart enough to know to close the parentheses. So you can see that the first number is the same, 5 and 5, it ranks 5, the 71. But if I double click the fill handle here, you'll notice that now the student number 2 would have 50 and student number 11 would have 50. They both get something like 8.5. So that's what it does. So, so maybe this one example would give you a little bit more clarity in terms of are there uh, numbers that are duplicates. So anything, anytime you see a 0.5 after the number, you know that that number or that rank, it's there because there are duplicates. Now that's going to give you the average. That's the rank.avg uh, uh, function. 
So we have also a rank that eq function, and they, basically this function is the same as the rank function because uh, that that rank function might go away in later versions of Excel, so they have this rank.eq function. So it basically does the same thing as the rank function pretty much. If I type in rank and I select this EQ here, and I select the number and the reference, I click in here, control, shift, down arrow, press the F4 key to make that an absolute range, and then just press enter. You notice that that turns into five again, and I'll go ahead and double click that, and you can see the numbers are the same as the rank function here, right? So that's the way that you can use the different rank functions in Excel. Now, if you didn't want to have something like this, you want to kind of make it a little bit more interactive, you wanted to uh, have a search for student IDs and what kind of ranks you have between them, what we can do is something like this. I can put in a little function or a little combination of formulas in here. And first, I want to do is put a drop down here that lets me select the different students. So that can be done with a data validation list. And in the data validation, this what you can do is just go into data, and we have our data validation here. I'm going to go ahead and select this data validation, and I'm going to choose list here. So here's the list selection. So once I choose list selection, I'm going to go into the source and just select this range from C2 to C21, and click OK. And once I do that, if I go back up here, I have this drop down available for where I can select the different students. Now the next thing I would need to do is create a VLOOKUP within that rank function. So the VLOOKUP form is going to look like this. First, it's going to include the rank function. And the number that I'm going to look up is still going to be, uh, it's going to look up a number that comes back from this VLOOKUP function. Well, let me do, go ahead and do the VLOOKUP function first. Let me go ahead and do V equals VLOOKUP. And I want to look up the value that gets brought back from this selection. So I want to look up the value that gets brought back by this selection. Basically, when it's going to look up the student ID, it'll bring back that score. So the VLOOKUP can do that. So I'm going to go in here, select that, and it's always going to be that cell because I'm going to copy it down the formula down to these other two rank functions. So I'm going to press F4 to select that cell. And the table array is basically the, the table or the range where I want to uh, have this look up to. So I'm going to look up C2 to D21 here, right? And I'm also going to press F4 to turn that into an absolute cell reference because I want to just, when I copy it down to these other two cells, I want that to stay static. Now the column index is, there's two columns here. I want to look up this value, that L3. I'm going to look up L3, which is that student. It's going to look up anything in student. And then I want to bring back the value in the second column. So I'm going to put two there. And I'll go ahead and I want it to make at an exact match. So it has to look up student one, two, or three, whatever, and bring back the exact match. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, double click it, and then I'll go ahead and just press enter to close it. So right now it says non applicable because nothing's selected here. So if I select it student one, it's going to bring back 71. If I select student, let's say I select student five, it's going to bring back 70. So it brings back 70. So we know that that works. So we'll bring back that number. Now what we want to do is take that number, 70, and plug it into the rank function. So the rank function, I can just put in front of this VLOOKUP rank, and I'll go ahead and just select rank here. And it, it will bring back that number, that's 70 that I showed earlier, and in the reference. So the reference, I'm just going to make, make a comma. So now it's highlighted reference in bold. And the reference basically is our column D here, D2. Go ahead and press Control shift down arrow. It's going to stick D21. I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute cell reference because when I copy it down, I want those to stay static. And then I'm not, I don't really care the order. I want to keep that same order for uh, descending. So I'll just press Enter. Whoops. And when I press Enter, because this is a uh, formula, it's a combination of functions, Excel is going to ask me that, you know, oh, it's going to be smart enough to know, hey, there is no parentheses closing it here. So I'm going to add one in for you. Are you going to accept it? And so just say yes. And what it does now it brings back a rank of six. So you notice student five here and student five here, six are the same. Let's look for one of our other weird ones here, maybe the difference here. Uh, eight, and then I'll kind of go and copy down to the other cells there. So let's go and select student two. I'm going to go ahead and select this and student two, and you'll see that it's giving me back eight, which is this one. Now I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. I'm going to double click it to copy it down. Everything's going to be eight, but when I get to this one here, I'm going to change that to dot. AVG, press enter, and now you notice that it's turned into 8.5. And this one I can turn, go into here and dot, put a dot EQ, press enter, and it's turned to 8. So now I have a little 
formula here that when I select different options here, let's say I'll select uh, student number 18, it should bring back 18.5 18, 18 and 18. So you can see that it's done that here. So that's another way that we can put a little bit more functionality or some, some little more feature rich uh, capability into the rank function if we wanted to do something like this. It saves room, it lets you select and tell people maybe uh, there's somebody that comes up to you and you go, oh, you know, let me go and select what, you, what student number or student name you are. And uh, this could be a student numbers that are kind of unique. They have to be unique numbers here. So we're assuming that these numbers here are unique so we can do that lookup. So I hope that helps with the uh, rank functions and a little bit more on the combination of different uh, features that you can use with uh, data validation and VLOOKUPs. I also have other videos on uh, data validation and VLOOKUPs. You can just search on the YouTube channel uh, and this will go ahead and bring those back. And I'll also put that in the description. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.